Yeah, the title is this, Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel, right? That is what Paul said in the 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 16. Let's go there. He says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For of necessity is laid upon me. Yeah, who is unto me if I preach not the gospel? You know, when we look at Paul's life, Paul literally lived for God. And every day he was still going to this place, to that place, writing letters and letters and letters and letters to the people, evangelizing, correcting them, giving them the message of the cross. Every day. And he picked up his cross every day, daily, and he ran the race. to follow after Jesus Christ. And he said, it is not I'm just doing this. I'm doing this out of a necessity is put upon me. For for necessity is laid upon me. It is a thing that that I must do, I have to do, because if I don't do it, then woe unto me. It's cursed on me that I'm a cursed being if I don't evangelize. If I don't preach the gospel, it's a curse to me. Many of us don't think, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm I'm not this and that. We all are people who hold the talents of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether we know a lot, some people have 10 talents, 5 talents, whatever talents, okay? You have talents, gifts, and abilities given unto you. Right now, it's so easy to evangelize with a mouse click, with a finger, finger tapping. All you can do is just share to your Facebook, share to your friends, and Twitter it, whatever it, I don't know. Use whatever that is, evangelize. Because if you don't, let's, let's see what happens. According to the Word of God, right? Matthew chapter 25, verse 24. Now, this is about the, the parable of the talents. Now, God gave many talents and other people multiplied. Those who were given five, multiplied ten. Those who were given two, multiplied to four. Right? Those given one talent, this guy who received one talent, in 24 it says, Then which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where you sow not, and gather where thou hast not strawn. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there is, your, there is what, what you gave me. There's that talent. There you go. He said, I was afraid. He feared. What, do you, what can you be afraid of? What can you be really afraid of? Your reputation, right? Oh, they're going to think you're a Jesus freak. They're going to think you're crazy about Jesus. Oh, what a shame. Is it a shame to you? Then you're afraid of your reputation being ruined among your friends and families or whatever, people. Don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed because He will be ashamed of you. And let's see what happens to His servant, right? And then... And, and, And 28, take therefore, uh, 27, uh, 26, let's go. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. He calls you wicked. Wicked for being fearful. He calls you wicked. Why is it so wicked? Because you're caring about your self-image, a self-God that you have made. Oh, my image, I'm a, I'm a cool guy. I'm not a Jesus freak. I'm a cool guy. You're caring about your self-image, which is your God. Oh, my image is that I'm rich, I'm, I'm successful, I'm not a Jesus freak. I'm cool among people. I'm cool, I'm not a, I'm not a crazy guy like this guy. That's your, that's your image that you care so much about. Oh, the good looking one, the cool one, the nice, the nice car with five, whatever. Okay, all the Hollywood glamour. That's why maybe you're ashamed to put Jesus Christ because people usually hate Jesus Christ and people usually don't like Jesus Christ and you don't want to be unliked by them. You want to be liked by everybody. You want to be liked by the popularity and therefore you become lukewarm like them. You become mixed with the world and it's a stench to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a shame to the Lord Jesus Christ that you bear His name and you're ashamed to share the gospel. Paul, if he was here, He would have whipped you and rebuked you and told you to get out of the church then. Paul was a hard man. Do you understand? He rebuked the church members. And he would have certainly, and he even didn't want to hang out with Mark, who was afraid to, in the beginning, who was afraid 
to, to go with him and, and he thought it was so unprofitable that he had a big fight over him with Barnabas, another apostle. He had a big fight with him saying that Mark is unusable for the kingdom of God. And he would have told Jesus the same thing if your fire was not like that. The first church was fervent for God. They were evangelizing. They were selling everything they got. They were living for Christ, literally. They died for Christ. They suffered for Christ. And you want to sit in your own home and, and, and don't do anything about your, your talent? Well, guess what will happen to you? He says 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. For every one that has shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast you the unprofitable servant. He calls that servant unprofitable. Good for nothing. Right? Cast this unprofitable servant into outer darkness. That's, that's I believe, is hell, guys. Outer darkness. Because there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The description of hell. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping, they're crying. Because they couldn't make it into the kingdom. They lost Jesus. They lost everything. And they're crying because they, they ruined it for eternity. And they're weeping, weeping, weeping. And they're gnashing teeth. They're, they're sometimes full of anger. Because they're suffering in this darkness forever and ever. And they're angry against God for rejecting them. They're angry against everybody who didn't teach them the right thing. The pastors, the other prophets, the, other, the evangelists that didn't teach them the right way. They're angry at them. It's like, ah, oh God, they... they told me the wrong thing and I believed them and I messed up. I didn't believe the word of God. I believed the people. They said, love, 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 love. And I didn't do anything about salvation. And you're lost forever. Would you want to be one of these unprofitable servants who are afraid to, to preach the gospel and to the whoever needs it? It says, hey, if you don't want to, you should have gave it the talent to the bank bankers and made at least, you know, the surplus, whatever you would get over time. What does that mean? How would you get any other surplus out of your talent if you don't want to even evangelize? For example, you're so afraid, you don't want to evangelize. How can you make this talent still be able to multiply and at least have some percentage, uh, APR, I don't know what, 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 you know, whatever. Interest rate. How would you get this interest rate? How? It says put it, he says put it into a bank. That means put it into an institution where they can multiply for you. For example, you can support with your money. You know, that's the only thing I can find that, that you can do because what you only got is probably money. That's the only thing you have. Working. So you're working. So you have a job. So you have money. So invest that money and give it onto where? Evangelism. Okay, give it to evangelism. You know, send missionaries. You know, support them. Or, or you know, donate onto churches. Okay? Or donate onto, you know, I don't know, you know, there are a lot of Christian organizations that does it, right? Search up some stuff and give it unto the poor. And as you give it to the poor, evangelize, right? Support these organizations that bear the name of Jesus Christ and that are helping the poor. Give it unto them. Then you'll have certain amount of treasure in heaven that your talent is being used. Because maybe your talent say, oh, my, my talent, I don't have any other talent. My talent is making money. It's going working in my job. That's my talent. Well, use it and whatever money that you made from, place it to the ministry and let them multiply. Let, let them do that work and you'll get interest. That's the only way how I find an unprofitable servant who wants to hide a talent. That's the only way that they'll any, get any interest. Do you understand? Paying tithes is not, is not um, making talent interest. The paying tithes is what you should do. Offerings is something over 10%. Offerings is something where you can really um, use that talent. Because 10% is just, you, you need to do it. Okay? It is a minimum of what you should give. And it was a law. And it was um, not the law of Moses. It was the law of God put in our hearts. It was given from Abraham, Abel, and also, you know, Abraham also offered unto Melchizedek, 10%. Out of heart. It was before Moses' law time. How did you know? Because it's written in our hearts to give unto God what belongs to Him. Amen? So, that's that. Let's pray and repent unto the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, God, forgive us of not being diligent with your kingdom, not being productive in your kingdom, not being, Father God, using the talents that you have given us, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that we have 
received. Father, help us to really multiply it and give unto the people. And Father, God, use it for your kingdom. Father, help us to use our talents that you have given unto us. Let us be able to multiply it somehow, Father. Give us your wisdom. Give us your knowledge. Help us to spread your word and save the people that are perishing, Father God. Father, we don't want to have any curse. We don't want to be cast out as unprofitable servants, weeping and gnashing of teeth. We don't want to end up there. Father, we want you to change us completely to be men and, and, and women of God that evangelize unto people. Give us wisdom and help us find ways to do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.